Honorable Senators, other members. Honorable Senators, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm profoundly humbled and overwhelmed by the great honor and privilege you have bestowed upon me by electing me as the speaker, as your speaker of the Fourth Senate and the 13th Parliament of the Republic of Kenya. I'm deeply humbled and touched by the immense confidence and trust that you have placed on me. I therefore accept with humility and pledge that I shall perform to my utmost ability the constitutional responsibilities and duties of the office of the Speaker of the Senate for the next five years with due diligence and decorum. Distinguished Senators, allow me with great pleasure to congratulate and salute all of you the new senators of the Fourth Senate for emerging triumphant in the just concluded general elections after a bruising political contest. Your election to the high office of senator of your various counties and constituencies is a demonstration of the faith and confidence that the electorate have in your, capa in your capabilities to serve, transform, and improve their welfare and well-being. Today, you're invited to grapple with the challenges and work towards meeting the high expectations of the Kenyan people. Honorable Senators, also wish to recognize my worthy opponents, Mr. Isaac Aloch Polo Alocher, Ms. Beatrice Kathomi Kinyo, Mr. George Bush, Mr. Frederick Mushiri Karuri, and Mr. George Njoroge Kuria for the valiant, mature, and well-fought competition. We have ably demonstrated that we can compete democratically and without tranka in a dignified race. Hongera Kwenyu. I also extend congratulations to our newly elected colleagues in our sister house, the National Assembly, and wish them every success as we begin to execute our national duties of jointly steering our beloved country to greater heights. In embracing the spirit of devolution, I'm delighted by the rich blend of membership of the Fourth Senate drawn from former members of the National Assembly, governors, and members of the county assemblies. I note that nine former members of National Assembly and four members of the county assemblies have joined the Senate, while some have returned after haters. They bring with them in invaluable experience that will enrich the House. We're also fortunate to have diverse blend of professionals joining the Senate, including top legal minds, no less than senior counsel, scholars, doctors, renowned members of the civil society, among others. Let me also take this opportunity to acknowledge the contributions of senators from the Third Senate who did not return, including the eight members of the Third Senate who are elected as governors. I'm confident that they will continue to serve Kenyans in the different capacities. Kenyans from all walks of life deserve a part on the back for demonstrating to the entire world that we have a mature and vibrant democracy following the peaceful general elections held on the 9th of August 2000, 2022, and the subsequent petition filed and concluded at the Supreme Court. Distinguished Senators, permit me at this juncture to pay my singular special tribute to my immediate predecessor, the Right Honorable Kenneth Makelo Lusaka, EGH, who has recently, who has who was recently elected as the governor of Bungoma County. He ably presided over the third Senate in perhaps one of the most challenging periods in our country's history. Historically, the first Senate was established in 1963 and functioned until 1966 when it was dissolved 
and merged with the House of Representatives to form the National Assembly. The first Senate under the 2020, 2010 Constitution was inaugurated on the 28th of March 2013, primarily to oversee the implementation of the devolved systems of governance. Honorable Senators, it is worth mentioning that at the onset of devolution, Senate was sailing in uncharted waters. None of the political leadership and pioneer senators had a clear idea what the trust ahead entailed. As Speaker Lusaka noted on the 31st of August 2017, they had to learn how to swim by swimming. It was largely trial and error at first. The Senate of the 12th Parliament, to a great measure, played an instrumental role in improving the legislative regime, work systems, and coherence of key processes that have gradually bolstered devolution implementation. My predecessors and the leadership teams, guided by unit of purpose and the will to actualize devolution, initiated work systems, spearheaded a series of retreats, workshops, and seminars that rapidly crafted the framework of transiting and admin, administ, uh, administering Senate in the 11th and the 12th parliaments. As the renowned American writer and political commentator Walter Lippmann wrote, and I quote, the final test of a leader is that he leaves behind in other men and women for that matter, the conviction that the will to carry on. We salute both the right Honorable Ekwe Ethuro and the right Honorable Kenneth Lusaka and their leadership teams for their remarkable contributions. The fourth Senate must now build on the decade of institutional maturity. Permit me, honorable senators, to also appreciate and allow the clerk of the Senate, Mr. Jeremiah Nyagenye, and his team for the unwavering and steadfast support and for making the appropriate preparations for this momentous occasion. Honorable senators, devolution as a novel development model was meant to ensure balanced, equitable, and just development in all regions of Kenya. I can submit without fear of contradiction that so far it is working. I welcome and associate myself with the positive spirit exhibited and pronouncements made by the newly elected governors to change their strategy of engagement and work more closely with the Senate, the National Assembly, and the national government. In addition, the pledge and commitment currently being witnessed to, intensi to intensify the fight against corruption in the respective governments is highly commendable. Kenyans are looking forward to a new dawn and expect senators to aggressively defend devolution and count governments better. We must ensure devolution works for the people and more accountab accountability is therefore exercised. Distinguished senators, the critical question is, what, next, what is next for the fourth Senate? How do we build on the achievements of the first, second, and third Senates? Fundamentally, the Senate must continue to play its constitutional mandate and role more vigorously. Just to reiterate and remind ourselves on senators, the primary mandate of the Senate is to represent the counties and their governments and protect the interests of the counties and hence successfully implement devolution. The Senate is involved in lawmaking by considering, debating, and approving bills concerning counties, determines the allocation of revenue among counties, exercises oversight over, na of, over the national revenue allocated to, to the counties, and participates in the oversight of state officers by considering and determining any resolution to remove the president or deputy president. Distinguished senators, the Senate is the bastion of devolution. Devolution has been a game changer and, it's, and has significant, uh, significantly transformed our country. The county governments are currently receiving billions of shillings, courtesy of the Senate's intervention, to finance various development programs and provide essential services that are aimed at improving the well-being and welfare of the Kenyan people. 
massive infra infrastructural projects have been built throughout the country, including roads, educational and healthy facilities, as well as, as well as housing projects. In addition, local entrepreneurs, youth and women have greatly benefited in terms of securing businesses and employment opportunities. Distinguished Senators, since 2013, without doubt, devolution has dramatically altered the political and socio-economic fabric of our country. Kenyans are currently reeling and, and undergoing tough economic times. The Senate is duty-bound to be more sensitive to the dictates and aspirations of the ordinary Monanchi. Going forward, Honorable Senators, with the rich blend of its membership, it is incumbent upon the Fourth Senate to play its due constitutional role and ensure that national and county governments deliver on their mandate to improve or lighten the burden of our people. We hence cannot rest on our, ro on our, ro on our, ro on our rollers. We must build on the foundation already created. Achievements bed and strive to make devolution work more effectively and better. We must initiate and enact more devolution compliant legislation and bills since our predecessors have already identified a number of gray areas uh, in our devolved systems of governance. We will adopt a proactive approach in our pursuit to make uh, the Senate an effective governance institution to Kenyans and let Senate be the sanctuary in times of distress. I urge and encourage Kenyans to make the Senate their beacon of severity and hope. The first Senate will strive to reach out and harmoniously work with the National Assembly. Hitherto, supremacy wars witnessed in the past between the two houses have tended to ferment unnecessary acrimony and grandstanding, which adversely impacted on the legislative outputs. I call upon and encourage honorable senators here to address emerging contentious legislative challenges and resolve them within stipulated mediation frameworks while ad adopting uh, collegiate approaches, noting that these processes are intended to serve the best interest of the people. That is how tangible and progressive milestones will be realized by a bicameral parliament. Distinguished Senators, I also wish to urge Honorable Senators to adopt and nurture bipartisan and collegiate leadership approaches that will transform and invigorate the Senate to embrace the various political shades and interests represented in the 13th Parliament and ensure they find the rightful place. Under the new Senate leadership, we will endeavor and ensure to do the following. One, the Senate work strategy will be reviewed as appropriate to enable senators perform their constitutional and leadership responsibilities through systems that are predictable and adequately facilitated to enable them deliver effectively and quality services. Two, dynamic and innovative, uh, innovative programs and activities of the Senate guided by the need to respond to key priorities of the counties shall be initiated to respond to identified challenges. The Senate will continually bolster and strengthen internal collaborative linkages, deepen existing partnerships and engagement between the Senate, national and county government departments and agencies, regional and, and international development partners, as well as state, as well as non-state actors to work closely and harmoniously with the evolution family. Learning and leadership are indispensable to each other. We will ensure continuous capacity development and empowerment of senators and their secretariats so that they can const, uh, constantly update their skills and expertise and ensure they acquire requisite parliamentary exposure to enable them handle complex and new uh, frontiers of legislative and public affairs. The Senate will endeavor to be responsive to emerge, uh, emergent situations and reignite the manner in which traditional legislative services and relations with our various stakeholders and counties are offered. Honorable Senators, elections come and go. We have concluded the electoral phase and must now proceed to the critical transitional 
and development phases. After the, uh, after the delicate ballet dance of politics, we have to overcome and begin to heal from our challenges born out of these divisive political alignments. I urge and call upon our people to refocus, embrace unity, and move forward. No Kenyan should feel left out. It is now time to put behind, behind us political rivalries, roll out our sleeves, and together focus on building the new Kenya that we all desire. Distinguished Senators, Kenyans expect from us nothing short of servant, responsive, and effective leadership. Let us aspire to be, the to be forthright in the performance of our legislative functions, especially in undertaking oversight rules, so that the citizenry can build trust, find refuge, and solace in the Senate of the Republic of Kenya. We should neither entertain nor accept any discourse that will divide or polarize Kenyans. Honorable Senators, as I conclude, I wish to undertake that under my stewardship, my commitment to you, Honorable Senators, and the people we represent, is to be a faithful and impartial servant, ready to discharge my diverse roles and responsibilities with due diligence and in accordance with the Constitution of Kenya and Senate standing orders. Finally, to call the former United States President, John F. Kennedy, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what ask what you can do for your country. We have a collective, solemn, and patriotic duty and responsibility to rally fellow leaders and Kenyans to put the interests of our country first and move it to the next level of development and, pro and prosperity. On my part, I shall respect and uphold the rule of law, legality, and nurture the culture of constitutionalism. And I shall protect, defend, the Constitution of the Republic of Kenya, and always safeguard the mandate and role of the Senate. Honorable Senators, I welcome you all to join me as we embark on this journey together. I thank you. May God bless this Senate, and may God bless our country. Thank you so much. Next order, please. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. Point of order. We do after the vote. Huh? Yes, the Senator of Kakamega. What's your point of order? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you'll pardon me. I wanted to make uh, a small acknowledgement for what has just happened, but we have agreed collectively that it can wait until after the second order of electing the Deputy Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Very well, uh, the Senator for Kakamega. Next order, please. Order number five, election of the Deputy Speaker. Honorable Senators, Standing order number 13 provides that as soon as practicable, after the election of a speaker following a general election, a deputy speaker shall be elected. Standing order number 13.4 further provides that the procedure for the election of the deputy speaker shall, with necessary modification, be the same as that prescribed for the election of the speaker. A number of activities were required for the election of the deputy speaker before this sitting. I will proceed to detail each, each of such activity and the manner in which we have complied with the standing orders. Firstly, standing order number five, one, requires upon the president notifying the place and date for the first sitting of the new Senate, pursuant to Article 126.2 of the Constitution, the clerk shall by notice in the Gazette notify that fact and invite interested persons to submit the nomination papers for election to the office of the deputy speaker. Vite Gazette notice number 10532, dated 5th of September 2022, 
and an adver ad advertisement in the Daily Nation and the Standard Newspapers of 6th September 2022, the Clerk of the Senate invited persons to submit their nomination papers for election to the Office of Deputy Speaker of the Senate. Secondly, Standing Order Number 5-4 requires that the clerk shall maintain a register in which uh, shall be shown the date and time when each candidate's nomination papers were received and shall ascertain that every such candidate for election to the Office of Deputy Speaker is qualified to be elected as such under Article 106 of the Constitution. Honorable uh, Senators, for the position of Deputy of the Senate, the following candidates were validly nominated as at the close of the nom nomination period. One, Mazayo Stewart Shadrach Mochiro, and identification number 1059777. Two, Murungi Kathuri, identification number 1154461. Standing Order Number 61, as read together with Standing Order 134, provides that the election of the Deputy Speaker shall be by secret ballot. I now direct Honorable Senators, pursuant to standing order number eight, a candidate may, by written notice to the clerk, withdraw his or her candidature before ballot is started. In this regard, I wish to draw the attention of the Honorable Senators that this morning, by a letter dated 8th September 2022 and addressed to the clerk of the Senate, Senator Mazayo Stewart Shadrach Mochiru, withdrew his candidature for the position of Deputy Speaker of the Senate. Honorable Senators, Senator Mazayo Stewart Shadrach Mochiru, having withdrawn his candidature for the position of Deputy Speaker of the Senate, we now have only one duly nominated candidate for the position of the Deputy Speaker of the Senate. Standing Order Number 11, as read together with Standing Order Number 13-4, provides that if there is only one candidate who has been duly nominated for election as deputy speaker at the expiry of the nomination period, that candidate shall be declared forthwith to have been elected deputy speaker without any ballot or vote being required. Consequently, consequently, pursuant to the provisions of standing order number 11, as read together with standing order number 13-4, are hereby forthwith declare Senator Murungi Kathuri to be duly elected as the Deputy Speaker of the Senate. I shall now proceed to administer the oath of affirmation of office on the Deputy Speaker. Mimi Murungi Kaduri nikiwa nimechaguliwa kama naibu speaker wa seneti 
Na hapa kwa jina la Mwenyezi Mungu kwamba nitakuwa mwaminifu kwa watu na jamhuri ya Kenya kwamba nitatekeleza kwa uaminifu na uangalifu kazi yangu kama naibu speaker wa seneti. Kwamba nitatii, nitaheshimu, nitahifadhi, nitalinda na nitaitetea hii katiba ya jamhuri ya Kenya na kwamba nitatenda haki kwa watu wote kulingana na katiba ya Kenya na sheria na desturi za bunge bila uoga au upendeleo upendo au chuki ewe mwenyezi Mungu nisaidie thank you very much thank you okay thank you Order, order uh, honorable senators, uh, we have uh, prepared for you a reception at the courtyard, so after we rise, we expect all the senators to come for the reception. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. Yes, the Senator for Kakamega, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this is a very important day. We are actually writing, writing the history of this nation. And therefore, I request that you allow us uh, at least one and a half minutes, those who wish to congratulate you, to do so. And if you so permit, allow me, Mr. Speaker, to congratulate you for winning this position. Mr. Speaker, my colleagues here have voted for you, maybe because of the good campaign you did. You recall what we went through. But myself, I voted you for that and two more reasons. The first one, Mr. Speaker, is that I know that you believe in Parliament. You believe in the power of legislation. And how do I know, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, when you were the governor of Kilifi, and I was the chairman of the Senate Public Accounts and Investment Committee, Mr. Speaker, I visited your county and visited many other counties. And you are the first governor to build a debating chamber, modern chamber for MCS. I saw that as a commitment to a leader who believes in the role of lawmaking. 
For this, I voted for you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, also, you touched me. I, I believe in family, and the beginning of family is children. Again, when I visited your county, I saw the, count, the kind of infrastructure that you had put in place for early times ahead for the business. But with all that being said, I really need to finish this mm -hmm. meeting. Okay, I'll have one. Ha! First you twist it.